Today on Running to Him. Today we will look at a small part of our reading that deals with faith and soldiers and changing our perspective. Today we will read Luke chapter 7 and 8 and concentrate on verses chapter 7, 4 through 9. Luke 7, 4 through 9 says, And when they came to Jesus, they earnestly implored him, saying, He is worthy for you to grant this to him, for he loves our nation, and it was he who built our synagogue. Now Jesus started on his way with them, and when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself further, for I am not worthy for you to come under my roof. For this reason, I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But just say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I am also a man placed under authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go. And he goes, and to another, come. And he comes, and to my slave, do this. And he does it. Now when Jesus heard this, he marveled at him, and was turned to the crowd that was with him, and said, I say to you, not even in Israel have I found such great a faith. Now, ever since I came to faith in Christ as a young soldier, there's, there's been a special place in my heart for a person who, even if only for a few years, dedicates her life to defending their country. I recognize that the centurion was with an army that had conquered Israel and was now stationed there as an occupying force. Nevertheless, this soldier recognized the need to support the culture and religious needs of the country he occupied. In this case, God raised a man who was seeking after him. Amazingly, the Jews felt so strongly about him as well. Verse 4 shows us that they were very complimentary of his work with them and recognized that he was a different kind of Roman soldier. It was for this reason that Jesus agreed to go to his house. Now, the centurion was indeed a humble man. In verses 6 and 7, he comes to Jesus and asks him not to go to his house, but to say that his servant would be healed. This was a significant step of faith on the centurion's part. He recognized that Christ had the authority to say the word, and it would be done. This simple act amazed Christ because a centurion was a Roman doing precisely what the Jews should have done about in faith with Christ and his work on earth. So the centurion, a soldier, was not condemned by Christ, but was praised for his faith. And that brings us to the reason that I love the military ministry. Men and women in the military are part of a group willing to give up their lives for their country. Indeed, some have different depths of commitment, but they all recognize their need to serve. This group of people is the perfect garden from which believers can nurture and harvest. Soldiers are in a state of flux. They recognize that uncertainty, and they're looking for a way to bring a firm foundation into their lives. We, as Christians, need to support ministries that support soldiers, because they will influence their families when they come home. So if you see a soldier today, or you know a person who was a soldier in the past, tell them that you're praying for them and that you are thankful that they are willing to give at least a little bit of their lives to allow us to live in a country such as ours. Augustine, who lived in 354 through 430 AD writes, do not imagine that someone cannot please God while he is engaged in military service. Take as an example Holy David, to whom the Lord gave such high testimony. Many just men of that time were soldiers. The centurion was a soldier who said to the Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my servant shall be healed. Thank you for listening. We pray that today's devotion was meaningful to you. We would love to hear from you. You can use either Facebook or YouTube to like, subscribe, share, and tell others about us. If you would like to contact us, you can reach me at phineasjacobus at runningtohim.net.